Hello and welcome to Golden Orb Studios. In this video I'll be showing you how to make a functional health bar, as well as some advanced tips at the end to make this even better. So the first thing we want to do is create a widgets folder, and this is just to keep everything organized. I'm just going to call it widgets. So open that up, and once we're in the widgets folder, right click, and then scroll down and go to user interface. And then we want to click the widget blueprint and then click the user widget. And then we can just rename this to health bar. Double click on that to open it. Drag the tab into there so it's bigger. And then you can see that we can't really drag anything in here yet. And that's because we need a canvas. So we can type that in and drag in our canvas panel on top of this. And now you can see that we have a nice canvas panel and we can start placing things on top of it. So let's type in progress bar. And for me, I want to have this on the bottom of the screen. So I'm going to anchor it on the bottom left side. And then I also want to add an image. So type in image, drag that in. And I also want that to be on the bottom left. So click on the progress bar and just to make things more organized, let's rename this to health bar. And then click the image and let's call this health image. And then next, let's go to our textures, right click, go to import. There's a free link in the description to download from Dropbox. So go ahead and do that so you can follow along with the tutorial. Once you do that, just import those. And then you can see that they're blurry and that's just because of the way they imported. So shift click and enter just to open all of those. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that the compression settings are set to user interface 2D. And then also we want to make sure that the texture at the filter is set to nearest. Now you can see that it's no longer blurry and then just do that for all of them. And then we can click on the health empty, go to the health bar, and then we want to go to the background image, click the arrow. Then we want to click on the health full, go to the fill image and click the arrow. And then we also want to make sure that the margin is set to zero. And then we can see it in action if we turn the percent up. And you can see that it's not red and that's because if you go to fill color and opacity, you just need to set these all to one and then it should be the right color. So next, let's just position this to be the right size. And then let's do the same for the health image. Select the image, go back to the widget, select the image, and then go to brush and click the arrow. And then we just want to scale this and match this to the pixels. All right, now that that's matched up, let's do shift click and then just move this over a little bit. And then let's make sure that the image is set to one so that it's always above the health bar. And now let's add the functionality. You can see that we can move this back and forth, but we need to link this to our character. So go to percent, click bind, create new binding. And before we do anything here, let's go to the event graph and then on event construct, we want to cast to the third person character or the first person character, whichever one you're using. And then for the object, we want to get player character. And we need to cast to the player character so that we can get the information from it, like the health values. And let's delete these extra stuff. And drag it of this and promote to variable. You can rename it if you want. I'll just keep it like that. And next you want to go to the health bar and then we haven't created the variables in the character yet, so we still need to go to our third person blueprint, BP third person, and then we need to go to the variables, click plus, type health, and then change this to integer, click plus again, and we want to do the health max, and set these both to 100 for now, unless you want your health to be higher than that. But for this tutorial, we're just going to be doing 100. Compile, and then go back to the health bar, 
We want to drag out and get the health. And then we also want to get max health. And then we want to change these and we can just drag on here and it creates one for us. So just copy and paste that. And alt to disconnect. And then next, just drag out of here and then do slash for divide. And we're just going to divide these values. And we're just going to divide these values because the progress bar goes from 0 to 1. So we need to make that compatible with that. So plug that into there. And then do compile. And to make this work, let's just get any key. So just type in 1. Click that. And then drag the health that we want to get. And then drag it out again. And place that on pressed. So we're going to set the health. So we get the health. We want to minus. And plug that into the health. And then whatever number this is, is the number that it's going to minus. I'm just going to do 10. Alright, and now if you click play, you can see that there's nothing. And that's because we didn't create the widget. So we need to go to event begin play, click S for a sequence, drag that into there, and then make sure that's still plugged in. And then drag out of that, and we want to create a widget and add to viewport. And in the class, we want to select our health, health bar. And now you can see that the health bar is showing. And when we click one, our health goes down. So now if you want to make it so the character dies, once the health reaches zero, we can get event tick, then hold B and click for branch. And we want to get the health again. And if the health is less than equal to zero, then we want the character to die. So let's type less or equal. Plug that in. So less than equal to zero, we want it to die. So type in it destroy actor, target itself, compile. So if we go in again and I click one until we die, you can see that our character disappears. Now you could add a death animation if you'd like. Now if you had a death animation or something, this is where you would put it. Another way to do this, another way to enhance this is we want to select this, copy, and paste, and we just want to put this before we press it. So what this does is we press the button, we check if the health is less than or equal, and we want to change that to false. Because if it's not, then we want to take away health. But if it is, we don't want to keep taking away health. So it's like negative 10, negative 20. And then what you could do is put your death animation on the true. So if we get rid of this, it will still work. And you can see every time I get out of it, that you get this error attempted to access BP third person, and that's because the health bar is using the reference from the character. But once the character is gone, there is no reference, so so it has no information to go with. So just an easy way to not have that error is we want to go to the health bar, get health bar, and we want to type is valid, and then we just want to get the third person character, plug that into there. And now it will only work if the third person character is valid. So now if I go back in, press that lots of times, escape, you'll see there's no more errors. If you want to take this another step further, we can go to the content browser, right click, add a blueprint class, and just click actor and name this player info. And then open that up. And then in the variables, we want to create the same ones that we had in here. So we can just copy, click that, paste, and then select that, control C, click on the variable, paste, and we click compile. We can see it has the same numbers. And then if we go to the BP third person and event begin play, we want to get actor of class. And then we want to select our player info and then go to return value, pull off of that, promote to variable, 
and just call that player info ref and make sure that's plugged in. And then let's just drag this up here. And then we want to get the player info and then get the health and then just plug that into there. And we want to do that for all of these. And then set health. Make sure that's plugged in. All right, and then we need to go to the health bar, go to the event graph, and we can just delete this. And we want to get actor of class, and then player info. Again, promote to variable, and then rename this player info ref. And in the get health, we want to get the player info ref, and then get health max. Replace that, and do the same for the health. And delete that and plug the player info in and the is valid isn't as important here as a third person character because the player info will always be there it's never going to be destroyed so it's a very useful way to store information especially if you have multiple characters that you're dealing with or lots of information and lots of different blueprints that you have to cast and get information from this is just a very easy and simple way to do it. And especially for main menus when your character isn't in that level, but you can have the player info in the level so you can still have all the information and not have any issues. And this just helps you not to get any of those messages that say access none. And to make this work, you just need to drag this player info in. So whichever level you use, you need to have the player info in there and then it will work. So you can see if I click play, it works just fine. And when I click it, I'll actually just go to the health bar and delete that. So you can see that it works perfectly. So if I click play, I click one, and I keep clicking, then I escape. There's no error messages, and that's because the player info is still there, so we can still get information from it. This is also very useful for creating save games, because it doesn't always work with the when you cast to the player character to save items, especially when you have t lots of variables. This just helps to keep things organized and make sure that you don't get any errors. Alright, so this is all for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful, and I'll see you next time.